for me, making evidence is not only about collecting the data and analyzing it, it's about communicating it as well. This is the third year that we have been running it, and this year it's going really, really well. We have, um, from LSE, we have, I think, around 15 people. Okay, um, my research is on looking at the role of community groups in tackling HIV stigma in Zimbabwe. And in my PhD, I'm exploring evaluations of creativity, how people construct beliefs about creativity. Relationship between science and society, the culture of science, and particular controversial issues. To be more specific, my PhD has to do with Easter egg decoration. Now, the motivation was agreements between governments and fashion industry to increase the size of fashion models. I work on the effect of party dynamics in the institutional design of the Mexican Chamber of Deputies. Uh, I'm looking at withdrawal plans from the Vietnam War. My research is in how power affects self-perception. I'm particularly concerned with how to represent migration information. Perceptions of healthcare and HIV services, more specifically for working with children with HIV AIDS in Western Uganda. I'm working on a kind of model of the creative process, so um, looking at action and how it takes place. And I would really use any kind of input on how to design actually that, because it's very complicated to, to put it on a page. So I think it's uh, quite a challenge for a designer to design a mathematical equation and to make it comprehensible that will be my brief. I'm Penny Hilton and I'm course director on Graphic Moving Image at the London College of Communication. The two institutions are in collaboration where we're setting our design students up alongside the social scientists of the London School of Economics and get pairing them up or getting them to work together so that the, our designers can work with the bank of information that the social scientists in this institution produce and they can start looking at ways of representing the data. Basically, as, as social scientists, we are trained mostly to collect data and conduct research but we don't really spend a lot of time in, in presenting this data and communicating this data in, uh, uh, in other ways apart from writing, uh, because writing is the main medium of communication for us. We acknowledge that uh, students and staff at the LSC have very interesting, rich uh, data where you work on the, uh, the content of the projects and our students are very interested in representing information and data so it was a natural uh, collaboration between students that are interested in presentation of information, trying to enhance its meaning, trying to gain attention for it, um, uh, with, with students at, at your end at the LSC that are interested in, in credible information but aren't maybe necessarily uh, thinking through um, how that's going to be represented. Um, so we thought, we, you know, we had a project at the uh, LCC, which is uh, called an elective, which is a four-day workshop. We thought the content from the LSC students would be ideal uh, for that situation. This is a kind of a, just an experiment. I gave this uh, Pradaya, I gave her a, a chapter of my book, which is uh, in the making, and she basically visualised uh, what she read in this, in this, in this chapter. I was quite intrigued by that. So what are we looking at? It's basically you're looking at, uh, at uh, the chronology of the debate over nuclear power since 1946. And uh, you can see uh, different elements of that in colours. Red is the, the armament, uh, green is the, the civil nuclear power, and, and on the graphic you see the, the news intensity in two, two types of measures, uh, which is a kind of an indication when uh, nuclear power had lots of news and when it had less news. You can see here how the, how the nuclear power debate had different frames from the beginning uh, to the present. So it started up as a measure of hope and then it became a matter of uh, becoming suspicious and today it's a clean, it presents a clean energy. So this is kind of changing over time and um, it's kind of, it's, it's a map of, of the public discourse. The purpose is not to turn social scientists into graphic designers and graphic designers into, you know, social scientists, but rather foster, you know, this collaboration, how we can help each other maximize, you know, the benefits out of our work.
people are not really interested in data visualization because it's part of the research culture. We are not trained in, um, you know, in, in thinking about our data in that way. And what more we can do with the research that we have. Information design um, has you know, been used you know, centuries before and often not by say designers but by uh, people that need to, to visualize a problem in order to understand it. So one very good example would be uh, Florence Nightingale's polar map or Dr John Snow's uh, color map of London. In order to present a case to government or the local authorities, they would have to visualize the idea first of all in order to understand it, in order to present it. So the idea of design as a, as a visual tool for presenting information to explain uh, ideas and concepts has, is, is not a, a modern phenomena. I think with the rise of the internet and the popularity of people accessing information, they want to see visuals. They particularly want to see visuals that are moving. And I think one of the most interesting potential um, areas that this collaboration could produce is for more moving graphics to come from it and we're hoping that will happen. Previously people might have seen it as quite a dry area that was to do with annual reports, statistics, graphs, charts and people are seeing its potential way beyond that and that's really through pioneers such as Richard Saul Werman and Edward Tufte um, you know, people like that that have kind of uh, introduced the importance but also the visual power of uh, information design. We study a lot of important you know, social phenomena and there's a lot of research going on but it needs to be you know, better communicated. I think that we have a responsibility to do that. Um, and, uh, and, and graphic design can be you know, a really good way of doing this. Part of the job of information design is to be able to navigate around it so that whatever it is that you're reading is clear and you can access that information and the understanding is absolutely paramount. Uh, listen, I have no doubt that uh, infographics will be uh, coming forward in all kinds of directions. What we're trying to do here, we're trying to bring in, in people together who know how to do these things because we don't want to teach people to do this. This is a different ball game, you know. Right, you're not going to uh, set up a graphic design uh, I don't school? Think, I don't think we're going to do that and we shouldn't. So let's bring people together who can do these things and uh, this will... Uh, every student here, every star, member of staff learns about uh, the logic of graphic design by simply talking to the designer through this thing.